The first learning outcome has to do with determining cash flows. The cash flows relevant to an investment decision or a project are the incremental cash flows. These are the cash flows the company realizes with the investment compared to the cash flows the company would realize without the investment. Very broadly speaking, we will consider two kinds of investments, a new investment and a replacement project. With either of these, we have three types of cash flows. The initial outlay, then the annual after-tax operating cash flows, and then the terminal year after-tax non-operating cash flow. With a new project, the initial cash flow or the initial outlay is the investment that we make in fixed capital. So this is the property, plant and equipment that we might invest in. And then the working capital investment. So for example, at the start of the project, we might buy inventory. That would be part of our net working capital investment. Then we have after tax operating cash flow every year. So let's say this is a three year project. The initial outlay happens at time zero. Then end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, there will be an after tax operating cash flow. Obviously, there are cash flows throughout the year, but for simplicity, we just assume that the cash flow happens at the end of each year. Now, to calculate that after tax operating cash flow, we take the sales for the year minus the cash operating expense minus depreciation. Then we subtract taxes, so multiply by 1 minus T, where T is the tax rate and then add back depreciation. Through algebra, we can show that this can also be written as S minus C into 1 minus T, and then tax rate times depreciation. This tax rate times depreciation is also called the depreciation tax shield. So notice higher the tax rate or higher the depreciation, higher this tax shield. Also keep in mind that the operating cash expense does not include any financing cost. The financing cost is built into the discount rate that is used to calculate the net present value. But in any case, you need to remember this formula that for every year, the cash flow is S minus C into 1 minus T plus the depreciation tax shield. Then the third item here, is the terminal year after tax non operating cash flow. This happens at the end of the project, and that cash flow is equal to the salvage value here at time t. So we might have equipment that is being sold off, and what we get is the salvage value plus our net working capital investment. The idea here is that we might have inventory and other working capital that is liquidated, so that generates some cash that needs to be considered and then minus the tax rate into the capital gain. So if we sell our equipment at this value, the salvage value at time t, but there is a certain book value, the difference is our gain, and t times that gain gives us the tax on our capital gain. So this is our cash flow at the end of the project. If we have a replacement project, then these two calculations remain the same. The difference is in the beginning. So our initial outlay is equal to our investment plus our net working capital. And then we subtract the salvage value. Now, if we are replacing an old machine with a new machine, this old machine is being sold and we are getting cash. That is this salvage value over here. Since this is an outlay, that's why money coming in from selling an old machine is shown as a negative. And then we have plus the tax rate into salvage value minus book value. So this is the salvage value of the old equipment minus the book value multiplied by T. So this is the tax that we pay on any gain. And again, since we are looking at an outlay, that's why the tax that we are paying here is considered positive.